Hi everyone, welcome to this Monday, September 5th. I'm Sister Mary Elizabeth from the Season of the Word community and I would like to welcome all of you that are joining us on this day. First reading for this Monday in the 23rd week in Ordinary Time is 1 Corinthians, first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 5, verses 1 to 8. Let's get started with the reading of the Word of God for today. It is actually reported that there is sexual immorality among you, and of a kind that is not found even among pagans, for a man is living with his father's wife, and you are arrogant. Should you not rather have mourned so that he, he, he who has done this would have been removed from among you? For though absent in body, I am present in spirit, and as if present, I have already pronounced judgment in the name of the Lord Jesus on the man who has done such, such a thing. When you are assembled, and my spirit is present with the power of our Lord Jesus. You are to hand this man over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh, so that his spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord. Your boasting is not a good thing. Do you not know that a little yeast leavens the whole batch of dough? Clean out the old yeast so that you may be a new batch, and you really are unleavened. For our Paschal Lamb, Christ, has been sacrificed. Therefore, let us celebrate the festival, not with the old east, by the east of the east of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Paul here is saying that he knows that there is a huge sin, a sin of sexual immorality in the community of, the, of Corinth. He's not there. He's writing to them. But he heard about this sin, the sin of sexual immorality. And he says, even if I'm not among you, I know what is happening. And I am with you in spirit. Paul, the founder of that church, is with them in spirit and he is correcting them he's acknowledging that there are errors in there and he wanted to teach his children but how is he to teach him we can hear this when we hear he's saying that you need to to give him to hand him over to satan we can say whoa such a harsh word but paul here for sure knows exactly what is happening and this man, he, he might have had been warned by the other people who were there, by the elders there in their community, but he didn't want to listen to him. So Paul is saying, when you are gathered in, in assembly and the Spirit of the Lord is there with my spirit, the spirit of a fatherhood, of someone who has a, a spiritual authority over that community, hand him over to Satan that his body may be destroyed, but his soul may be saved. And this is what Paul is saying here. We need to destroy sin, but to save our soul. Even if the body needs to die, the soul will live in our Lord Jesus Christ. Paul is saying here, let us celebrate with joy, with purity, the feast of the Paschal Lamb. The feast of this victim that was given to us, a pure victim. Let us live a holy and pure life. Responsorio today is Psalm 5. It says, Give ear to my words, O Lord. Give heed to my sighing. For you are not a God who delights in weakness. You will not sojourn with you. The boastful will not stand before your eyes. You hate all evildoers. You destroy those who speak lies. The labor, the Lord abhors the bloodthirsty and sinful. But let all who take refuge in you rejoice. Let them take refuge in you. Let them ever sing for joy. Spread your protection over them. 
so that those who love your name may exult in you. So that those who exult in your name, who rejoice in your name, may exult in you. And the Gospel from St. Luke, chapter 6, verses 6 to 11. On the Sabbath, Jesus entered the synagogue and taught, and there was a man, and there was a man there whose right hand was withered. The scribes and the Pharisees watched him to see whether he would cure on the Sabbath, so that they might find an accusation against him. Even though Jesus knew what they were thinking, he said to the man who had the withered hand, Come and stand here. He got up and stood there. Then Jesus said to them, I ask you, is it lawful to do good or to harm on the Sabbath, to save life or to destroy it? After looking around at all of them, Jesus said to him, Stretch out your hand. He did so, and his hand was cured. But they were filled with fury and discussed with one another what they might do to Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus is in the temple on a Sabbath, and they were all watching Jesus, looking at him closely to see what he was going to do. They were trying to see if he would cure on a Sabbath. And remember, a Sabbath was a day that no labor, no work was allowed. It was a day to rest in the Lord and only to listen to his word. That's why they were in the temple. They were looking at him closely. And Jesus asked a question. Is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath? Is it lawful to do a good thing for someone on this day? And they didn't answer. Because just the action of doing something was against the law. But Jesus was trying to teach them to say, doing good is the work of the Father. The Father said, Jesus said in the gospel, the Father and I work always. So the fact that they were working, that Jesus was doing good, he was doing the work of the Father. So it wasn't a work to gain money or to distract Him from praising the Father, honoring the Father. It was a work that was going to honor the Father. And they didn't answer anything. So Jesus says, come here, stretch out your hand. And this man with a withered hand was cured. And the Pharisees were furious with Jesus because he cured on a Sabbath. But they were unable to see that Jesus was not trying to affront them, trying to prove them wrong. Wasn't Jesus' point to prove them wrong? Jesus was doing that to show that mercy and love, they have a greater place in the heart of our God than not than, um, fulfilling the Sabbath, than not transgressing the Sabbath. Not transgressing laws are what we are called to do, but we are called to go beyond that. And what is that we can do to beyond, the, beyond any law that we are called to fulfill is love and mercy. To cure this man was to prove that the Father has, the Father is mercy. He has mercy on us, but most, most of all, He is mercy and that He's always working. And His Son, Jesus Christ, is also always working with the Father. May the Lord bless us on this day that here in Canada we celebrate Labor Day. The day that we honor the labor. We honor the, our share in God's kingdom. To work is our share in God's kingdom. But the leader did today is saying that working or not working, that's not the point. The point is to do the will of the Father and to do the same deeds that the Father does. Amen.